I mentioned this Ulanzi Mini Fluid Head in a previous video, and this is an unbiased review of it. Overall, it's great, but there's also some flaws that you need to know about. I won this monopod in a giveaway competition from Joe at the Film Alliance not long ago, which I was very excited about. But it didn't come with any sort of ball head or video head, so I had to get one that suits the design of this monopod. I mainly shoot video, so a good fluid head was what I needed. Preferably a small fluid head, and since I didn't plan on investing in more camera gear that month at least, the price mattered too. After a lot of searching, I fell for this. It's the Ulanzi U190 Mini Fluid Head. I'll start with the good things. It's the right size for this monopod, and I feel the build quality is great, which also matches the build quality of the monopod. It's got a nice weight to it, and it can also take a payload of around 10 kilos, which should be far more than what most of us need. The price is also lower than the equivalents from more traditional camera brands. I got it for 45 euros or something with a discount code. It seems as if this axis is dampened with hydraulics, but I can't tell from the Ulanzi website if the pan action is. It feels like it though, it's very smooth. There are two independent locking screws for each axis. They work like friction screws to slow down the panning and tilting further if needed. There's no way of modifying the hydraulic damping or set an offset for heavier lenses and cameras though, as expected at this price point. The camera is mounted with this Arca Swiss type plate and there's also a hex key included for that, fixed with a magnet on the side here. That's a nice touch. There are also a couple of stops here to prevent the mount and the camera to accidentally slide off. It seems as if Ulanzi put some thought into designing this fluid head. Underneath, there's a 3 8 inch threaded hole, which is great because it's more secure than only using a 1 4 inch. I can mount this on this Pineta monopod, but not on any of my other tripods. Until I remembered that there actually is an adapter included in the box. I forgot about that. So all is well then? Nope. There are a few downsides that you need to be aware of. And I need to go on a little rant here about other testers here on YouTube, who never really test the gear that they get to review. Most of them just sit in a studio and recite the specs from the website. Maybe they will demonstrate how things work indoors, but you need to remember that most, if not all, camera gear YouTubers are nothing but sales reps. They produce glorified product descriptions. That's all they're good for. I don't say that I'm much better, but at least I've tested this product for over a year now. And here are the flaws that I found. Let's get outside. The handle is too short, and that's nothing you will find out by panning in a studio. I noticed that in particular when I use my full frame Canon camera, which hasn't got any stabilization whatsoever. Even if the action is very smooth, there will always be some unwanted jerks in the movement. Part of this is the very short handle, which is only good for repositioning the camera. This is unusable footage. I think a longer handle would make for smoother movement. To test that theory, I went to the hardware store and got myself a longer aluminium rod. Now a one meter handle is a bit too much and I will cut it later, but let's test, just for fun. I realized there is some training involved to get smooth movements, but I think in this little test the longer handle is better. Another thing to think about is that it's difficult to secure the head to the tripod. This isn't a secure lock, it's only a friction screw. There will always be some motion here. Often the head will come loose when moving the tripod around in places or after doing some panning. It's annoying to always having to tighten it. And if you do manage to tighten it securely, you can't easily get it off. The thing just spins around. Not a huge real world problem, you will get it off eventually, just needed to mention it. It is a design flaw in my opinion. Finally, a small thing maybe, but a bit irritating to me is the fiddling with this Arca Swiss type of plate. It's great that the head comes with the hex key, but there is some fiddling every time I need to attach the camera. 
very secure once in place, but I prefer a tool-free solution or maybe a quick release system. This is a personal preference thing, and maybe you prefer this more secure type of attachment. I still recommend this fluid head. If you can live with the downsides, it's a very well-built fluid head at a competitive price. See you in the next video.